person should you use an emotional sales pitch and why does it matter? I'm Scott Sippenbell. I'm coming to you live from Sacramento, California on a perfect day to talk about sales and a perfect day to talk about emotional sales pitches. Now, just about every single day I either write with a salesperson or I train a salesperson so I get to see all sorts of good, bad, and ugly sales presentations. And you may hear the phrase that people buy with emotions and justify with logic and I'm going to tell you that's absolutely the truth. And so what happens is, especially in a sales slump, what a salesperson will do is they will run into a sales call and they will go, look, buyer, fact, 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 you're going to do business with me or not, okay? But in all realities, what a salesperson should do is when they go in and they go into the discovery phase, which is asking the questions, they should ask the questions to the buyer and say, can you tell me about what's going on with your product, service, which are a gizmo? And they say, I have an issue with delivery. And then what you're going to do is you're going to ask a question and say, so how does that make you feel? And there's multiple different ways to ask that question. And then they're going to come back and they're going to say, I'm frustrated. Okay. Now the key here for an emotional sales pitch or emotional sales presentation to work the right way is you mirror their words, you mirror their phrases. And when I'm watching sales presentations and I'm watching salespeople go back and forth with buyers, what they do is they shift between words. So let's say I'm the salesperson and I'm looking at the buyer and I say, how does it make you feel? And the buyer says, uh, I get frustrated. And I'm, as a salesperson, I go, okay, so you get angry? And the buyer goes, no, frustrated, okay? And so if you're gonna build the rapport process, you're gonna talk with your buyer, you're gonna take them through an emotional sales presentation, you wanna hold a mirror. Like if I had a mirror in my hand, you wanna hold a mirror to their language patterns and the words they use. And you wanna be able to take them from one step to another. So let's go through this process again. I say, so how does that make you feel? And they say, I would be frustrated. I might come back and go, would you say angry? Right? I, my job, my job is to give a really good follow-up question and really find out where that pain scale is. So like sometimes people will say, well, on a scale of one to ten, one being it doesn't matter, ten being it's super important, where would you find it? Right? And if somebody says it's like a three, well, you're gonna have to find out. Like, well, what would take it to a 10? What would make it an eleven? What would make it a twelve? Emotional sales presentations go wrong when salespeople do them wrong and they create problems. So what you need to know is it comes down to one, asking the right questions in the discovery phase, and then two, asking a good follow-up question to find out where that buyer is really at, and then three, use their natural language pattern. So if they say frustrated, you say frustrated. If they say angry, you say angry. If they say happy, you say happy. Just whatever word that they're using, it's going to help build some comfort, like they, they don't go, that's not what I said, okay? So you're gonna to wanna to use conversation, you're gonna to wanna to repeat back information with them, but an emotional sales pitch or an emotional sales presentation is built around the buyer, not necessarily your presentation until you ask some questions in the discovery phase. So there you go. You got one thing to do from here, just one thing. Find the subscribe button and click on it every time I send out a video, you'll get an update that says Scott Bell Consultant sent out another fantastic video. You should check it out, which you should. We'll see you soon. Thanks for dropping by. Aloha.